Hey, what's going on guys? In a few days, we'll mark the sixth month anniversary for Fire Emblem Heroes and there's going to be tons of events going on and there's never been a better time for a new player to start playing Heroes. There's going to be tons, or at least I hope, a huge influx of new players. I thought it would be the best time to go over some in-game mechanics that the in-game tutorial does not explain. Some of the day one veterans that play this game casually might not even know some of these mechanics, so this may help you out, you'll never know. Today's video is going to cover buff stacking. Before I get into buff stacking, I want to give you guys a quick intro to the two types of buffs. They don't have any specific name so I'm going to call them active buffs and combat buffs. Active buffs when applied to a hero can be identified by a green arrow icon on your hero's in-game sprite. If you tap on your hero you can see the stat that is being buffed on the top bar which should be displayed as a bluish color. You can tap on that stat and it will show you the original stat and the buff amount. Active buffs will last one entire turn meaning it will be active during the player phase and the enemy phase before going away. You can usually tell if the buff is an active buff or not just by looking at the effect. The effects usually have the keywords through their next actions or at the start of turn. These keywords are also on active debuffs which follow similar rules. There's a lot of skills that apply an active buff. First are rally skills. Currently these are the only assist skills in the game that apply an active buff. The unit with the rally skill is required to use up their player phase turn in order to apply the buff to an ally. Next are the healer exclusive bomb specials. These specials will grant all the allies to buff for one turn on activation. In the A skill slot there's the defiant skills. The defiant skills will grant the hero the buff at the start of the player phase if the hero meets the health requirement which in this case is 50% or lower. If the health requirement is met the hero is granted the buff at the start of the player phase and will last till the end of the enemy phase. In the C skill slot there are the hone and fortify skills. These are the most popular kind of active buffs and the reason is because they are so easy to activate and the buff can be granted up to three units on a single activation. Basically everyone on the team besides the skill holder is able to receive the buff. All you need to do is have your ally stand adjacent next to the skill holder and they'll be granted the buff at the start of the player phase. In other words, I need one space left, below, right, or above the skill holder. Keep in mind that one space adjacent does not mean one space diagonal. It's only left, right, above, or below. Lastly, there are some weapons that apply active buffs as well. I listed some of those here. Alright, onto the combat buffs. Unlike active buffs, combat buffs have zero indicators. There's no green arrow, there's no color text, there's nothing. You can't really tell if the buff is applied or not. The only way is to compare the damage numbers at the top bar when you hover your hero over an enemy. This kind of buff only works during combat and will disappear after combat. Just like active buffs, you can usually tell if the skill is a combat buff just by looking at the effect. The main keyword to look for is during combat. There's actually tons of skills categorized as combat buffs, so I'll just go over the two common ones. First, there's the blow skills. These skills only activate during combat initiations, meaning you won't be able to activate it during the enemy phase, only player phase. And the skill that I'm mostly going to talk about today are the spur buffs. There's a lot of skills that work similar to spur buffs. There's drive, goad, and ward. Spur buffs only apply to adjacent allies during combat, while the other three works for heroes within two spaces. Goad and ward have a higher buff value than drive and spurs but they only work for certain classes. Some other skills that weren't listed include distant defense, close defense, and the boost skills. Alright so that was the gist of the two types of buffs. Let's finally get into buff stacking. You cannot stack an active buff with another active buff that's targeting the same stat. If a hero already has plus 4 attack from the hone attack skill, you cannot give that same hero an extra plus 4 attack with another active buff like rally attack or another hone attack skill. The game won't let you do that. However, if the values are different, then the stronger active buffs will override the weaker one. If we're talking about boosting different stats at the same time, like plus 4 attack and plus 4 speed, then it's perfectly fine. You can apply as many active buffs to a hero as long as they are affecting different stats. Combat buffs on the other hand do stack. They stack with other combat buffs and active buffs. Each stack can be affected by any number of combat buffs. So realistically, you can have three heroes with spur attack three, and if the fourth unit is standing adjacent next to all three, then he or she is able to receive plus 12 attack during combat. That seems really powerful, and it is, but having to keep all your heroes bunched together like a Tetris piece isn't always the best formation for a lot of teams out there. A common question that comes up is which buff works with Blade Tone's effect? Only active buffs work with blade zones effect. I listed most of those skills earlier when I went over active buffs. Combat buffs like spur attack still works the same way it does with any other hero or weapon. It just doesn't work with blade tones effect. Here's some pictures that might be easier to understand if you still don't get it. On the very left is just a blade tome hero with zero buffs. The middle is with spur attack 3 which grants 4 attack during combat. And the last picture is with hone attack 3 which also grants plus 4 attack but since it's a 
an active buff, the hero gains a total of plus 8 attack because of Blatone's effect. Alright, so that's where we're going to end today's video. Hope this video helped you guys, especially the newer players out there. I know buff stacking was a popular topic when the game first released, and a lot of people were confused and had a lot of questions. If I missed anything, or if I didn't answer one of your questions, let me know in the comments. I'm planning on creating more in-game mechanic videos. I have a few topics that I have lined up. They do take a while to make, so don't expect the next one anytime soon. Regular review and build videos will still be uploaded in between. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.